Welcome to Horrible Horrors. My name is Zach Romero. Today, we have an Indonesian female-led Terminator ripoff from 1989. Consider me in. Let's get this thing going. Well, well, well. I will hand this to you, Indonesia. You are not one to screw around. We jump right into that PG-13 lovemaking. Well, this is pretty. What is that man's face? I need that face framed and put on my mantle. Okay, this has gotten off track already. So, let's dissect what's actually going on in this scene. <laughs> well, this has been great. Thanks for watching. Okay, no, seriously. What more do you possibly need? What else is it going to take to get you to want to see this movie? I mean, are you not entertained? Fine, fine. We'll do this a traditional way. We'll go over this thing point by point. We start the film by being introduced to the Queen of the South Sea, a forgotten deity with one thing on her mind. S-E-X. The problem is, she's insatiable in a bedroom. Is there any man who can satisfy me? She spends her days taking in wayward travelers, sexes them up so crazy, but they all die right there in between the sheets. Now before you go and change the channel because you heard the movie Teeth is really lame, Relax. The Queen of the South Seas Lady Parts is not an angry mouth. It doesn't have sharp teeth. It's nothing ridiculous like that. However, she does have an eel that comes out of the hoo-hoo and bites the snossage right the f off. You know, like it could happen to anyone. So eventually we meet Captain Good Dick, who comes in and is just the best ever. To the point where the eel comes out to attack him and he magically turns it into a dagger. Again, that should be enough to make you want to see this movie in its entirety right now. So she's pissed because he used foreplay. And the queen disappears and threatens revenge in a hundred years to Captain Goodick's great-great-granddaughter. That is incredibly specific revenge! So now we're in 1989 and the young anthropologist Tanya is investigating the Queen of the South Sea legend. So before you can say, how does this involve Schwarzenegger in some way, it leads to Tanya going to dive into the Queen's resting place and she is jump-cutted into a bed! Oh! Okay, I guess that's just a thing that happened. And lo, the mystical eel makes its triumphant return! Tanya is now possessed by the Sea Queen. Which means she walks and acts like Arnold in the Terminator films. Including walking into the Indonesian equivalent of young Bill Paxton. However, in this case, the Lady Terminator takes both gutter punks and does the horizontal merry-go-round with them, and then they're both dead! What I've just described to you takes place in the span of 22 minutes. So what does this movie use to pad out the next hour of footage? Well... two other characters of note, great-granddaughter of Captain Good Dickens, and hard-nosed detective Max McNeil. Listen, Jack and I have seen more dead bodies than you've eaten hot dogs, <laughs> so shut up and eat. <laughs> <laughs> what even? So in no time flat, all three of our characters meet up. Sing Daughter is performing at a club that the copper is visiting, and Lady Terminator shows up and starts wrecking sh Come with me if you want to let's move! Yes! I came here to chew bubblegum and watch this movie rip off James Cameron films, and I am all out of bubblegum. Some strange woman starts shooting up people, and you won't believe this. She can't be killed. What you mean? If it bleeds, it dies. They're ripping off other Schwarzenegger films other than Terminator. When does the ripoff of Kindergarten Cop take place? So it's go time. Lady Terminator decides to take the fight right to the police station in search of the target. He's dead! He's dead! Leave him alone! He's dead! So much fake blood. So much gun boom. So old man know-it-all comes into the picture and uses the mystical necklace to zap Lady Terminator right in the fucking eye. So how does Lady Terminator respond to this? By blasting his dick into oblivion. <laughs> Jesus Christ! So 
after that piling of dead bodies, we're down to Max and Erica. While Lady with the Eel cheaply reenacts the famous eye removal scene. After that, Lady Terminator continues to make chase until inexplicably they're all at an airport where a random helicopter missiles the living sh** out of her in a car. But for something like this, you gotta bring in the whole squad. Hi Max, how you doing? Let's Let get it take it out. Out. blow her up and there's no way anyone could survive such a- OH MY GOD SHE TOTALLY SURVIVED IT! Now at this point, you may have one burning question on your mind. How is it that a sea goddess possessing a woman turns her into a cyborg killing machine? Well, the movie takes a moment to explain- LASER EYES! Huh? Did you hear me? Motherfucking laser eyes! So when all else fails, they finally call out the big guns. Yes, a tiny net is a death sentence. It's a net and it's tiny. Tom, my buddy. That's acting. That's what that is. So after all those shenanigans, we're down to woman versus woman. The she Terminator versus the great granddaughter in a fight to the finish. Oh hey, here's a conveniently placed mystical knife. Thank you! Words fail me about this film. No, nay. This cinematic event. This is not something you watch. This is something you experience and it changes you forever. I cannot stress this enough. When it comes to Lady Terminator, find this movie. Find it. Watch it, love it, live it. I'm Zach Romero. Thank you for watching. Oh, come on, man. Oh, you want so long, buddy.